Hi, this is Polyven Teachers and I am Sagorika Banerjee. Once again, I am back with another exciting series of videos. This series of videos will comprise of the topic on cyber security and ethics. Today, I will be sharing you some very important, valuable information about cyber crimes, cyber security, and ethics. So stay tuned to my channel, hashtag Polyband Teaches, and watch the video till the end. Let me just share the screen with you all. So cyber security and ethics. This series of videos will comprise of all these subheadings. What is cybercrime? Categories of cybercrime? Types of cybercrimes? Impact of cybercrimes? Then why is cybersecurity awareness important? Need of cybersecurity? Cyber ethics? Privacy? How to be secured while using internet, Facebook, and WhatsApp? Then terms and regulations? Case studies? Cyber threats for students? Cybersecurity tips for students? And finally, that conclusion. So today in this video, I will be taking up the first three topics that are what is cybercrime? I will be explaining you about what is the actual meaning of cybercrime, then categories of cybercrime, then types of cybercrime. So watch the video till the end. What is a cybercrime? Cybercrime is a, any criminal activity that involves a computer, network device, or a network. Most cybercrimes are carried out in order to generate profit for the cybercriminals. So some cybercriminals, some cybercrimes are carried out against computers or devices directly to damage or disable them. So there are many cyber crimes which are just to damage your computer, your devices, or di disable them. Some cyber criminals use computers or networks to spread malware, illegal information, images, or other materials. Some cyber crimes do both. That is, target your computers to infect them with a computer virus, which is then spread to other machines and sometimes the entire networks. Now, what happened during pandemic days? Since we all went online, so there were many problems which arose due to this. And obviously, the cyber crimes increased. The onset of the pandemic last year resulted in heavier dependency on technology, coupled with the deeper adoption of integration interconnected devices and hybrid work environments. This renders us more digitally vulnerable than ever before. Indian government data recorded 1.16 million cybersecurity cases in 2020, a 3x spike from the previous year. Similar to other countries, cyber attacks in India risk national security by accessing sensitive government infrastructure. Last month, hackers pulled down the two-factor authentication system used by the Indian government to secure its email network, thrice compromising the emails of many government officials. Now, categories of cybercrime. If I talk about the categories of cybercrime, let me just mention this, that the US Department of Justice, that is DOJ, divides cybercrime into three categories. First was, first is the crimes in which the computing device, your laptop, your computer, your desktop is the target. For example, to gain the network access. Second one is crimes in which the computer is used as a weapon. For example, to launch a denial of service, that is DOS attack. And the third one is crimes in which the computer is used as an accessory to a crime. For example, using a computer to store illegally obtained data. Now, based on these categories, three major categories have been defined 
uh, of the about the cyber crime and these categories in which the cyber crime falls into are individual property and the government the first if i take individuals this category of cyber crime involves one individual distributing malicious or illegal information online this can include cyber stalking distributing pornography and trafficking so the next one is property this is similar to a real life instance of a criminal illegally possessing an individual's bank or credit card details what happens in this the hacker steals a person's bank details to gain access to funds make purchases uh, online or runs phishing scams to get people to give away their information they could also use a malicious software to gain access to a web page with confidential information now next comes government this is the least common cyber crime but is the most serious offense a crime against the government is also known as cyber terrorism government cyber crime includes hacking government websites military websites or distributing propaganda these criminals are usually terrorists or enemy governments of other nations so now coming towards the types of cyber crimes other types of cyber crimes are carried out with the expectation of financial gain by the attackers the few specific cyber crimes are identity theft this is the first one it is an attack that occurs when an individual accesses a computer to gather a user's personal information which they then use to steal the that person's identity or access their valuable accounts such as banking and credit cards these cyber criminals what they do they buy and sell the identity information on dark net markets offering financial accounts as well as other types of accounts like video streaming services web mail audio streaming online auctions and more so personal health information is also an a frequent target for identity thieves next comes credit card fraud it is an attack that occurs when hackers infiltrate retailers systems to get the credit card or banking information of their customers now the third one in this category is cyber stalking very important this kind of cyber crime involves online harassment where the user is subjected to a plethora of online messages and emails the cyber stalkers use social media websites and search engines to intimidate a user and instill fear so usually the cyber stalkers they know their victim very well and make the person feel afraid or concerned for their safety so what do they do they call up and they quickly get the otp number software privacy this is the fourth one it is an attack that involves the unlawful copying distribution and use of software programs with the intention of commercial or personal use trademark violations copyright infringements and patent violations are often associated with this type of cyber crime next comes social engineering social engineering involves criminals making direct contact with you usually by phone or email so customer uh, what happens in this they want to gain your confidence and usually pose as a customer service agent so you will give the information necessary information needed what do these cyber cyber criminals then do they attempt to add you as a friend on social accounts for this purpose sixth one is cyber espionage it is a crime involving a cyber criminal who hacks into systems or networks to gain access to confidential information held by a government or other organization so cyber espionage activities can include every type of cyber attack to gather modify 
or destroy your data as well as using the network connected devices like webcams or closed circuit TV, like CCTV cameras to spy on a targeted individual or groups and then monitoring the con communications, including emails, text messages, and instant messages. Next is exit scam. In this, dark web administrators, they divert virtual currency held in marketplace escrow accounts to their own accounts. Essentially, criminals stealing from other criminals. Then comes PUPS. PUPS are potentially unwanted programs, uninstall necessary software in your system, including search engines and pre-downloaded apps. They can include spyware or adware. So it's a good idea to install an antivirus software. Always try to do that to avoid the malicious download. Next comes phishing. This type of attack involves hackers sending malicious email attachments or URLs to users to gain access to their accounts or computer. Many of these emails are not flagged as spam. Users are tricked into emails claiming they need to change their password or update their billing information, giving criminals access. Next in this category is prohibited or illegal content. This cybercrime involves criminals sharing, distributing inappropriate content that can be considered highly distressing and offensive. Illegal content includes materials advocating terrorism related acts and child exploitation material. Next is online scams. What are they? Let's see. These are usually in the forms of ads or spam emails. And these include promises of rewards in terms of money or offers of unrealistic amount of money. So people, they easily fall into this type of trap. Next is cyber extortion, a crime involving an attack or threat of an attack coupled with a demand for money to stop that attack. One form of cyber extortion is the ransomware attack, very commonly used. Next is crypto jacking. It is an attack that uses scripts to mine uh, cryptocurrencies within browsers without the user's content, without the user's consent. Crypto jacking attacks may involve loading cryptocurrency mining software to the victim's system. And then comes exploit kits. These kits need a vulnerability. It's a bug in the code of a software. In order to gain control of a user's computer, they are ready-made tools criminals buy online and use against anyone with a computer. Now let us know what is this ransomware. It is very commonly used nowadays. Ransomware is actually malware that employs encryption to hold a victim's information at ransom. Normally loaded into a computer via a download attachment link from an email or website. It also either locks the screen or encrypts your data. Once ransomware is uploaded on your computer or tablet or phone, it is very difficult to remove without removing all the data. WannaCry attack 2017, one of the biggest cyber attacks to occur, is said to have hit three lakh computers in 150 countries. So companies affected include NHS, Renault, FedEx, Spanish telecoms and gas companies, and German railways. How to tackle these ransomware? Very important. Since we know it is commonly used, we should also be aware about how to tackling it. So first is backup. What is that? Keep a backed up copy of your data. Ensure it is not permanently connected to the network. Next is patch. Keep your software up to date. Vanakri was successful as those affected companies hadn't updated. The update contained a fix to the for the problem. 
Then comes attachments. Don't click on any links from emails or SMS as this could easily be from an untrusted source and contain malware like ransomware. Then another type, very important phishing. What is this phishing? It is an attempt to obtain sensitive information by deception. They cheat you. They will be after your login cred credentials, payment card details, or they will be asking you to upload malware to your computer. So the person, the email will normally impersonate a genuine company. You will feel when, when you will read the email, you will find that it is from a gen, genuine company. So you cannot differentiate it. So maybe a genuine person. So how to tackle this problem? Don't, first of all, do not click on any links sent to you on email unless you can guarantee who it's from. So if you know the sender, then only click on that link. Otherwise, do not click on that link. Then use a trusted method of contacting the computer company via a phone number, app, or website. So if you have any doubt, contact through phone or through WhatsApp number or any app or website. Then mark the email as a spam and contact the organization. Very important. So that's all for today. Thank you. That's all for today. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe my channel. That is hashtag Polyband Teaches. And yes, do not uh, forget to click on the bell icon because you will get the notifications of all the latest uploaded videos of my channel. So till I bring more videos, bye bye.